Hey guys, at the end of the last video, I mentioned how when we create new products, it doesn't show up in our list. So we're gonna be adding that and making sure that works. And then before we start doing that though, you guys had a great suggestion with Flatlist. There's a function called Key Extractor, which allows you to grab the key given an item. So what we can do, what that means for us, is we can say Key Extractor, and we can grab, uh, put a function here that takes an item and returns the key. And for us, our key is the ID. So just like that. And what that allows us to do is for our data, just say products. And now I can get rid of mapping. So that saves us a whole loop through our items, which is really nice. So let's let the bundle rebuild. And now we're good to go. So let's solve that problem. The reason it's happening is with caching because it does this one query once, so it just ran it right to load these, and then it doesn't load it again, it loads it from cache every other time. So when I go here, and I fill it out, and then I go back, it's pulling the data from cache. So we need to just update the cache. So how do we do that? Well, when we call mutate over here, we can actually pass another parameter. So this is how Apollo recommends doing it. Um, they have this thing called update, so we're going to copy this. This is your, uh, just a key that you add to the mutate function. And then this is pretty good commented, but basically what it is, is you specify the query you want to update. So for us the query is uh, products query like this. So it would probably be a good idea for us to move our queries in a place where we can uh, a local place that we can grab them all but for now I'm just gonna cheat and export this so that way I can access it from new products so what I'm gonna do is just import product query from products so this is the query we want to update so I'm grabbing that and we want products query there we go so you pass the query you want to update, so we're going to do that. And then here, this is the data that you get back from the mutation. So if we look at what we get, we are only grabbing the ID. But really, we want the name, the price, and the picture URL. That way we correctly update um, this object or the cache, because we need all those things. And the name of it is going to be the name of our mutation, which is create product. So create product. And just to show you guys, we can console.log create product. And we can see what that looks like. So after we read the query from cache, because we read it from cache first so we can update it, we then add something to it. So for us, we're going to be adding um, not comments, but products. So products and then we're gonna push a product at the end and the product we're gonna push is create product because create product is gonna have the name the price the picture URL and ID which is all the fields we need um, we're also gonna need the type name I think we get that by default we'll see when we update they'll tell us any errors that we have updating the cache if we do it wrong and again you write the query back to the cache so pass in the products query all right now we're good to go. So let me switch over here to the console so we can see if there's any problems. And let's make a P4 picker picture. Man, that is like slow. Choose add products. All right, so we see the console.log here. It got added just fine, so we're good. So actually, we did it perfectly, no changes that we need to make. Now, this is not actually how we're going to be doing it in the final version, but I did want to show you guys how to uh, update the products like that. Because that is, updating the cache is important with Apollo, so it's good you know how to do that. The other way you could do it is actually just pulling from the network every time and not using the cache, which we'll talk about uh, later when we get into like filtering and sorting these lists. But what I kind of wanted to do next was be able to edit some of these items, at least the items that are mine, because we should be seeing everyone's items here. 
And before I can know which ones I can edit, we have to be able to get the current user's ID, which we're currently storing in the JWT token. So one way for me to know is to get is to use async storage, which we could import from React Native, and we could pull that, um, make an async call, grab the token, uh, decode the token, and set that ID and use that to tell which items are ours. But it's kind of annoying to have to decode the JWT token every time, and it's kind of annoying to uh, pull having to do an async call because it's not the simplest, right? We can't just add the async call to our um, our render method here in products. We'd have to make some changes. So what I want to do is actually over here in our check token is notice how we have uh, the ID. Or we, we, we're going to get a token back. And we can optionally get a uh, the user IDs back the user ID back, which is really what I want. So, or we could just decode the token here ourselves if we wanted to. But we're going to store this using some kind of state. So I'm going to be using Redux because I like the best. But feel free to use like MobX or there's many others that are really good too. Uh, also, Apollo has one called Apollo Link State that you could try out. Um, I don't want to introduce too much in this video series, but I will be touching on that uh, very soon. So we're going to add Redux to this. That way, um, that way we can have the token, but we don't really care about the token, but the user ID uh, globally. So we get asked this a lot: How do you differentiate between uh, use, putting stuff in Apollo and using Redux or MobX and using them together? So here's an Here's a, a good uh, example where I try to put everything in Apollo that I can, and when I can't do it, I move something to Redux. And usually it's something where I want to access it from multiple components or be able to access it from all components. So here I want to be able to see who the current user is from my components. That's an important thing. So that's why we're going to be adding this to Redux. So to do this, let's go ahead and install. Wrong one. Here we go. Yarn add. We're going to do Redux and we can also do uh, React Redux. Okay, so I'm going to create a store. Store.js. All we're going to say is import create store. And this is coming from just Redux. And we're going to create a folder here that um, handles it. So in this or not, uh, if we're going to create a folder for our reducers, is what I mean. So we're going to have basically our root reducer, and we're going to store it in a folder called reducers. So we're going to import that, and we're just going to export default create store, and we're going to pass the root reducer. So we need to um, add this reducers folder. And then to add uh, Redux to our project or be able to use it from anywhere, we have to add a provider similar to how Apollo provider is used. So we're going to say import provider oops, from React Redux. And we can wrap this whole thing. And I'm going to pass this store in that we create. So we created that in dot slash store. Okay, so now Redux is connected to our React application. We just need to add some reducers. So index.js, I'm going to say uh, combine reducers. And this is coming from Redux again. And that's what we're going to do uh, export combine reducers. And this just allows us to have multiple reducers um, working in conjunction with each other in case we want to have more than one. So I'm going to call this user.js and we can just import user from dot slash user. And we'll, we'll just have this thing called user. So our user reducer, um, we can export const add user. 
So this is going to be our action. We're going to create a constant. And actually, we don't really need to export the constant itself, so I can get rid of that. But here's the action, add user. And this is just going to be a function that takes a really a user, right? And it's going to return uh, the type is add user. And then here, what do we want to pass a user? And then we're going to have a reducer for this. And this is what we're going to export default. And we're going to have our state, which is going to default to just an object. And then our action. And we can just destructure it to get the type, because that's really what we care about. And we can do a switch statement like they always do for these. And then we care about the, the type. So the first type is add user. And that's when we just add the user to our state. And so we're going to take the user and the uh, payload or in the action here. And you know what? We might have other things. Let's just keep it action. That way we don't destructure things that don't exist. So on add user, we're going to get the action.user, and that's really just what we're going to return. So action.user. And then we're going to have a default. And we're just going to return the state. That looks good. Let's see what it doesn't like. Uh, unexpected token. Looks like something. Oh, yeah. Export default. All this looks good to me. I think I'm making a silly mistake here. We're switching on that, returning. Oh, we need to add case. There we go. So we need to add case for each switch that we want to switch on. Just JavaScript error right there. But anyway, so we got a reducer here. This is good to go. We got our action. So now we just need to call our action. And uh, I'm just going to reload this. I think we should not be getting an error anymore. Perfect. And so we're going to call this from our check token function. And right now, I think this guy does not return a user, which is really what I want. Because, and I think we can modify the back end to get this to work. So let's look at our schema. Yeah, so it looks like we're just returning a string. So let's look at our resolvers and see if it'll be easy to. Um, add the user because I think with get user ID we do fetch the user or no no it looks like we just look at the token and the token has a user ID and we got that so okay really the user ID is all we care about for this so what we can do is return two things the token and then the user ID instead of just returning the token. So then we're going to have to change our schema. And I'm going to say type um, refresh token payload. And for this, it's going to have a token, which is a string, and a user ID, which is a string as well. So that's what we're going to return from this, refresh token payload. So now on our front end, and now also just a note, if you guys wanted to uh, make this where uh, you use, you get more than just the user ID, so some of you might need that, uh, you can fetch that and return more than just the user ID. But really for this application, we just need user ID. But you could pass back more, and how you would do that is in your auth here, you would fetch the user based on this user ID and return like the username or whatever. Okay, so. Now we just need to change our check token over here because now it's not just returning a token, it's returning a token and a user ID. Okay, so response. Um, okay. So component did mount gets that. So here's our response. Response.data is going to be refresh token, and that is now going to have two fields token and user ID. So here we go. So now we're going to set the token like so. Looks like we have token up there. And I'm just going to rename this to refresh token. Or uh, we'll, we'll call it new token. It's not really a refresh token. It's just been refreshed. So that's how you can rename things. Uh, let's reload make sure we don't have any errors. Oops. Looks like Expo just crashed there. Cool. 
So now this user ID. So I want to do I want to do call my action right here to add this user ID. So here's how I do that. I'm going to import my action, which is add user, and this is coming from reducers, and that's up a directory, reducers slash user. I'm kind of mixing my actions and my reducers, but I think that's okay. Um, we could really just call this modules instead of reducers because it's going to have both, um, but we'll keep it for now. Um, so I want to call this function, but you can't just call it directly. We need to uh, connect it. So I'm going to import connect from React Redux. And to help me out, I also like this function called bind action creators. And this is coming from just Redux. All right, so this is a higher order function, kind of like GraphQL. So we're just going to add it to the end here. So I'm going to say connect. And now connect takes a few arguments. Uh, the first one I believe is uh, a function. And that one we don't care about. That's mapping state to props, since this is only matters if you want to get the user ID from the state, which we don't want to. Here is where we get the action. So here I'm going to call bind action creators. Um, and that's where I'm just going to pass in. And this is a function that takes dispatch and then binds your functions with dispatch. And this function does it for us, so we don't have to worry about it. And then here we just pass in add user. And I'm going to name it something else like uh, add user action. Add user action. And the reason I'm naming it this is so we don't have a naming conflict, but it's still equal to add user. Cool. So now here, I say, and I get it from the props, um, add user action, and I pass in a object which has the user ID. Now the reason why this is here from the props is because we connected it right here. And okay, the length of that's just getting a little bit long. All right, so I think we're good. Um, we're getting no errors here. What we'll do in the next video is actually grab that user ID, make sure we're getting it from the state, um, and then show you like a little edit icon if you own the product. But that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.